l'argomento che tratteremo oggi è di grande interesse, certamente per noi, ma anche per le start-up italiane che vogliono e devono uscire dai confini nazionali se vogliono aprire i loro orizzonti al mercato globale e agli investitori internazionali. Ritengo che Hong Kong sia un'ottima piattaforma da cui partire per avviarsi, avviare un processo di internazionalizzazione inserendosi direttamente in una regione che cresce a ritmi difficilmente paragonabili in quelli di altre parti del mondo inserendosi in un contesto favorevole alle imprese dove tutto è concepito per facilitare lo sviluppo, il reperimento di fondi, la produzione di profitti, l'espansione commerciale verso i mercati asiatici, ma anche verso il resto del mondo, dove il prelievo fiscale non è opprimente e non ostacola lo sviluppo, dove le imprese trovano aiuto e sostegno nello sviluppo dei loro progetti, non solo sostegno finanziario, ma anche tecnologico da parte delle molte strutture, incubatori, università, venture capital, enti pubblici e privati che operano a Hong Kong a sostegno dell'innovazione e delle imprese. Dovendo decidere il titolo del mio intervento di oggi, ho pensato a una frase molto concisa che esprimesse lo scenario che ho appena descritto. Ho pensato alla nostra espressione una città a misura d'uomo, per intendere una città dove ci si trova a proprio agio, dove ogni cosa che ci occorre per rendere la nostra vita più piacevole è a portata di mano. Ho pensato alla centinaia di, di, alle centinaia di imprenditori e manager italiani che conosco e che operano a Hong Kong. Sono i più forti sostenitori del clima favorevole alle imprese che si respira a Hong Kong e sono i loro commenti che mi hanno ispirato il titolo, una città a misura di imprenditore, perché questo è effettivamente Hong Kong. In questo momento di grande preoccupazione causata dall'incertezza sulla ripresa delle attività economiche, abbiamo tutti il dovere di ricercare le scorciatoie, le opportunità di crescita ovunque si trovino. Non pensiamo in alcun modo di trasferire le aziende italiane a Hong Kong, non vogliamo portare via il lavoro dall'Italia, assolutamente. Al contrario, pensiamo alla necessità di stabilire una presenza fisica laddove ci sono le opportunità per far crescere le nostre aziende e creare occupazione e profitti in Italia. Per troppo tempo abbiamo trascurato i mercati asiatici e le opportunità che Hong Kong ci mette a disposizione per giocarci la partita a fianco dei concorrenti di ogni parte del mondo e a pari condizioni. Se non lo facciamo, la partita è persa, è una lotta impari, non riusciamo a essere competitivi. Oggi vorrei fornire solo una brevissima sintesi e citare solo alcuni dei motivi che, per cui la competizione è iniqua se non approfittiamo di quanto ci offre Hong Kong. È solo un'introduzione al programma che svolgeremo nelle prossime settimane, dedicato interamente alle start-up. Se avessimo voluto fornire un quadro completo in una sola volta, avremmo dovuto impiegare molte ore e non saremmo comunque riusciti a dare tutte le informazioni necessarie per capire come muoversi in un mondo tanto lontano e diverso dal nostro. Ho cercato di capire il motivo che ha impedito finora alle start-up italiane di avviare delle iniziative a Hong Kong a fianco di quelle americane, israeliane, inglesi e francesi, solo per citare alcune tra le più attive a Hong Kong. Ho immaginato che il motivo fosse legato a una mancanza di comprensione o di fiducia nei propri mezzi e quindi ho voluto programmare degli incontri accessibili a tutti, come sono appunto quelli che ci mettono a disposizione piattaforme come Zoom, direttamente con i player principali dell'ecosistema delle start-up di Hong Kong. Oggi incontrerete alcuni dei miei colleghi di Invest Hong Kong, sui quali potrete contare per l'assistenza ad ogni passo che farete nel processo di avvicinamento e di avviamento dei vostri progetti a Hong Kong. La prossima settimana avrete invece l'occasione di incontrare uno dei player più importanti del panorama delle start-up di Hong Kong, il Science and Technology Park e il suo team che gestisce i vari programmi di incubazione. 
avrete anche l'opportunità di presentare i vostri progetti al team che darà un riscontro immediato sulle validità, sulla validità del vostro progetto e sulla possibilità di essere inseriti in uno dei loro programmi di incubazione. Chi non l'avesse fatto ancora eh, è pregato di sottoporci il proprio progetto al più presto per la selezione dei cinque progetti più affini alle aspettative del Parco Scientifico e Tecnologico di Hong Kong. Difficilmente potremo esaminare e presentare un numero maggiore per coloro che non fossero selezionati, ci saranno altre opportunità di presentare il loro progetto ad altri incubatori più adatti al tipo di progetto, come Cyberport, Betatron, Brink e altri che seguiranno nel corso di questo programma delle prossime settimane. Per questo motivo raccomando di, di seguirci lungo tutto il percorso che si svolgerà con i prossimi incontri, che vi permetterà di avere un quadro completo dell'ecosistema delle start-up di Hong Kong. E ora, come promesso, una brevissima sintesi delle attrattive, delle attrattive principali di Hong Kong per gli imprenditori italiani desiderosi di competere nel mercato globale. Iniziamo con la localizzazione di Hong Kong, di cui ho accennato, al centro della regione con il più alto eh, potenziale per le nostre esportazioni. Hong Kong si trova al centro di un'area di un'area tra, tra le più attive, le più dinamiche, con il maggiore potenziale di crescita. Ma parlando di localizzazione, non potrei non accennare eh, alla cosiddetta Greater Bay Area, un agglomerato strategico che comprende Hong Kong, Macao e nove città della regione del Guangdong, confinante con Hong Kong, che insieme formano una potenza straordinaria in termini di PIL, potere d'acquisto, industrie manifatturiere, servizi finanziari e logistici. Tanto più strategica per le start-up che localizzate a Hong Kong possono usufruire di partner tecnologici a Shenzhen, raggiungibili in taxi o con i mezzi pubblici da Hong Kong, o di, par o di partner industriali di ogni tipo nel resto della regione. Ma non voglio anticipare troppo a questo riguardo perché mercoledì prossimo avrete modo di ascoltare una presentazione dedicata proprio alla Greater Bay Area da parte di un esperto di Invest Hong Kong nel corso del webinar organizzato con Hong Kong Science and Technology Park. Merita una considerazione la posizione molto speciale di Hong Kong in quanto regione della Repubblica Popolare Cinese, ma con uno statuto che gli permette un'autonomia totale in termini di diritto, per esempio, a Hong Kong è in vigore la common law britannica e i processi si svolgono a Hong Kong secondo le proprie leggi fino all'ultimo grado di giudizio tramite giudici internazionali esperti appunto di common law. Una posizione speciale anche in termini di territorio doganale. Hong Kong è un territorio doganale diverso da quello della Cina. È un porto franco esente da Dazio e licenze di importazione sulla stragrande maggioranza dei beni importati merci possono entrare ed uscire liberamente, lo sdoganamento richiede normalmente 24 ore o a volte meno. È diverso in termini di lingua, importantissimo, le lingue ufficiali di Hong Kong sono l'inglese e il cantonese e chi ha viaggiato in Cina sa bene le difficoltà di comunicazione e di comprensione che incontra incontrano gli stranieri che non conoscono la lingua cinese e la comunicazione, sapete bene, nel business è fondamentale. Grosse differenze in termini di informazione. In Cina Google, YouTube, Facebook, Whatsapp e molti altri mezzi di comunicazione a cui siamo abituati sono vietati. L'informazione è sottoposta a censura. A Hong Kong tutto questo è totalmente libero. Quindi potete immaginare la grande posizione strategica di trovarsi a Hong Kong in una città totalmente libera ma a ridosso a un minuto a, a pochi minuti o di taxi o di, o di metropolitana da, dal territorio cinese. Un altro punto, un'altra grossa differenza che occorre importante menzionare è il, eh, i controlli valutari. Ogni trasferimento di soldi per qualunque finalità è sottoposto a controlli ed autorizzazioni in Cina, mentre Hong Kong è uno dei territori più liberi al mondo in questo senso. La valuta di Hong Kong, il dollaro di Hong Kong è liberamente convertibile in tutto il mondo e legato al dollaro USA. Eh, non ci sono restrizioni, si possono portare dentro e fuori capitali e profitti senza dover chiedere autorizzazioni di alcun tipo. 
finirei con in termini, la differenza in termini di tasse, un, una differenza non da poco. Dicevo prima, Hong Kong non esiste, un, non c'è un regime fiscale opprimente che impedisce lo sviluppo. A Hong Kong c'è una sola imposta sui redditi delle imprese, al 8,25% sui primi 2 milioni di dollari di Hong Kong di profitti netti. Quindi una società che produce profitti sui primi 2, 2 milioni di dollari di Hong Kong, circa 200 mila euro di profitti netti, paga soltanto l'8,25%, tassa unica, e sulla parte rimanente paga il 16,50%. Non c'è IVA, non ci sono altre tasse a carico dei redditi delle imprese e le imposte sui redditi delle persone fisiche sono tra i più bassi al mondo. Eppure Hong Kong e Cina. Siamo all'interno della Cina, all'interno di questo grande continente, questo grande mercato che cresce e che ha un miliardo e mezzo di consumatori, ma siamo a Hong Kong, in un'area un speciale, con tutte queste libertà economiche, con tutti questi privilegi. Hong Kong è parte integrante, quindi, del, par del più grande mercato e della seconda economia mondiale. Queste importanti differenze e molte altre che vi illustreremo nel corso delle presentazioni che seguiranno oggi e durante i prossimi incontri sono i motivi per cui non possiamo e non dobbiamo sottovalutare l'importanza di essere presenti con una propria unità che sia commerciale, che sia di ricerca e sviluppo o di qualunque altro tipo a Hong Kong. Costituire una società a Hong Kong è un processo rapido estremamente semplice e poco costoso. Il capitale minimo richiesto per una società a responsabilità limitata è di un dollaro di Hong Kong per ogni socio e mediamente tutto il processo di costituzione e registrazione si conclude in una settimana. Il primo passo è mettersi in contatto con noi per uno scambio di idee su come procedere. Il resto non sarà tutto facile, ma noi ce la metteremo tutta affinché il vostro progetto sia realizzabile. E ricordo che i servizi di, Hong Kong sono, di Invest Hong Kong sono gratuiti. Io concluderei qui, ringrazio per la pazienza eh, nell'avermi ascoltato e ora ho il piacere, eh, prima di tutto, di passare all'inglese. Quindi ho il piacere di cedere la parola alle mie colleghe Peggy Kwok e Jane Chen, che con tanta professionalità hanno creato e gestiscono una, divis una divisione di Invest Hong Kong dedicata alle start-up di tutto il mondo. Peggy, we turn now to English from now on. I promise I will not use Italian anymore. Peggy yeah. and Jane. Uh, so I will uh, invite you to present and uh, thank you for listening. Hi, hello everyone, buongiorno. This is Peggy Kwok from Invest Hong Kong, Senior Manager of Start Me Up team. And we have Jane Chan here, who heads up our team in Invest Hong Kong. So I'd like to welcome all of you to um, the, this webinar hosted by our dear friend in Milano, Stefano in Laria. We, would like, we know that um, the coronavirus has been hard hitting uh, Italy and our hearts really go out to all of you all. And uh, we, uh, in this difficult time, we really welcome all of you for tuning in and making time to hear what we have to say about the uh, Hong Kong startup ecosystem. So um, I will begin by uh, introducing our dynamic and vibrant startup ecosystem, uh, followed by a short video of, a, of our festival. And then uh, we will pass it uh, to Jane, who will lead our Q&A session. So here we are now, we'll begin. So uh, I'll give you a brief introduction of what Start Me Up HK is. Start Me Up HK is a startup initiative within Invest Hong Kong uh, to provide a one-stop service platform for global startups with three of key objectives. First, we encourage and attract uh, global startups from all over the world to set up in Hong Kong. Uh, we provide them with pragmatic, uh, pragmatic support that uh, Stefano mentioned earlier. Uh, in the areas of facilitation of visa, bank account opening, or providing you guys with um, networking uh, opportunities, PR and marketing support, or even introductions to clusters. Secondly, we have uh, the mission of promoting Hong Kong as an innovate, innovation tech hub. 
And with Jane, uh, she travels all around the world and attending uh, different uh, tech conferences around the world, such as a Web Summit in Lisbon, Collision in Canada, uh, in Canada um, the next web uh, in Amsterdam, you name it. So she has been our evangelist to promote what to driven startups globally, what kind of business opportunities reside here in Hong Kong, and how we provide pragmatic support to them. And thirdly, we also work very closely with um, the stakeholders um, in the ecosystem in order to build it up. So um, the, our ultimate vision is to really uh, bring all these um, global uh, innovative expertise to Hong Kong to collaborate with the local community so as to make Hong Kong much stronger economically. Annually, we organize our flagship uh, Start Me Up HK um, Festival, which uh, we'll tell you more a bit later. So uh, let's take a deep dive into the startup ecosystem. Every year in Invest Hong Kong, we do an annual startup survey uh, to take stock of how many startups we have, what kind of founders they are, what do they do, and what kind of industries they're in. As of last year, September, we have recorded uh, close to 3,100, uh, sorry, over 3,100 startups. And, but we believe the real number is close to 3,500, just because a lot of these startups have expanded beyond the co-working spaces incubators and accelerators and have become more established companies and doing their own things. So in the last six years, we really see a tremendous growth in our startup community, whereby back in 2013, we only have a handful of co-working spaces. When we look at the nationality composition of the startup founders, we find it actually to be quite international with one third of them coming from uh, countries from all over the world. In this chart, you see we have about 15% of them from US, 14% from mainland China, 12% from the UK, 7% from France. We have Italy around here that you guys make up about 2.6% of our overseas startup founders. So why don't we take the challenge of moving this Italy with this Itali beautiful Italian flag here, over here, so invest Hong Kong and you guys will, will help you to invest in Hong Kong. Next, so um, we will uh, take a look at what kind of um, uh, uh, industry makeup these founders are from. Uh, um, actually, it is very much related to the economy of Hong Kong. Whereas Hong Kong is famous to be an international financial center, just after London and New York, it is also an established trading hub with uh, streamlined logistic services and a service-oriented economy with business professional services. Not to mention our traditional pillars of industry, such as tourism, hospitality, and, and retail. So in the last few years, uh, we have observed the trend that all these key industries in Hong Kong, they are wrapping up their investments in technology such as AI, blockchain, machine learning. So as to come up with more customer centric value propositions to a customer base, which is more and more tech savvy so that they can stay relevant and competitive in the industries. It is not surprising to see the biggest number of uh, startup groups is from the fintech space. Here you can see 456, followed by e-commerce, supply chain management, logistic technology, information computer technology, design and professional services. So I'd like to give you a snapshot of uh, Italian business in Hong Kong. As of um, 2019, uh, we have about 9,000 uh, com uh, companies in Hong Kong with a parent company outs outside of Hong Kong. And we have about 40% um, regional headquarters, sorry, 40 regional headquarters, uh, 60 regional offices, and 70 local offices with companies, uh, with the parent companies in Hong Kong, uh, with, in, in Italy. And then we, of course, it, uh, Italy, Italian fashion and re, uh, luxury uh, items is well loved by the Hong Kong and also the Chinese population. We have two banks, uh, 
uh, Italian banks in Hong Kong, uh, Unibanco, uh, Unibanca, and also uh, Intesa uh, San Paolo. Intesa uh, San Paolo is very active in its Hong Kong startup uh, ecosystem. So um, let me look, uh, look at the, uh, let us look at the fintech space um, uh, in Hong Kong. This diagram just shows you how dynamic and how many players we have in the Hong Kong fintech ecosystem. We have over about uh, 450 startups, uh, fintech startups in the space of intratech, reg tech, wealth tech, and blockchain, um, supported by a group of uh, accelerators, uh, in the innovation lab, and invested by a key group of uh, venture capitalists. We believe a few milestones that is achieved in the last two years uh, in the fintech uh, ecosystem that would boost uh, further development in the fintech industry. They include um, uh, the granting of eight virtual bank licenses and three virtual insurance licenses, opening of the application program interface uh, to startups, which means that start startup can now have access to uh, the data in the banking industry so that it will drive more co-creation between incumbent banks and the startups. And also we have three um, fintech sandboxes set up by our regulatory uh, authorities uh, allow, which allow them to test um, startup solutions in fintech uh, without full compliance to regulatory requirement so that they can drive more innovation by reducing uh, development costs. So apart from the FinTech ecosystem, um, the, the startup ecosystem in Hong Kong is really underpinned by a wide array of uh, incubators and accelerators. We have the early movers, they are uh, publicly funded organizations such as Cyberport and Hong Kong Science Park. So they provide, um, until today, they provide very generous support to startups in terms of um, mentorship, uh, providing premises, and actual funding support. Um, and also, uh, they are also very highly valued for their investors networks, uh, enterprise network, and also creating lots of collaboration and co-creation opportunities between uh, corporates and startups. But the very fact that um, our startup ecosystem um, has a, uh, a large abundance of private players, of incubators and accelerators, just show you um, how much potential the city has in terms of nurturing our next generation of startups. To name a few, we have um, HKAI Lab, which is an AI incubator uh, backed by Alibaba and Sense Science and Hong Kong Science Park. We have Brink here, which is an uh, IoT hardware accelerator, and it has moved into food technology and energy tech space recently. We have FinTech Innovation Lab by Accenture. Uh, Betatron, which you will know uh, a bit more later in the latest series of webinar. They are formed by a group of well-established uh, investment firms in Hong Kong. And apart from funding support, they really provide a really hands-on guidance uh, for startups to help them scale up and fundraising. And also we have here started Asia, Italy, which is an innovation initiative by the Italian Chamber of Commerce. Uh, last year, they brought uh, six Italian startups in the retail and fashion tech space uh, to, for a week in Hong Kong and Guangzhou um, so that they can know more about our um, uh, ecosystem and also meet invest, uh, potential investors. Now, we also observe the trend that established corporates in Hong Kong have established their own innovation lab in order to drive more value for their business. For example, here we have Eureka Nova, which is um, a startup initiative uh, backed by a con conglomerate in Hong Kong um, so that they um, um, can start, uh, invest in startup solutions that would actually help them integrate in their business lines. And also they uh, uh, collaborate with other uh, banks such as Mizuho and uh, uh, technology company Tencent to come up with different industry focused uh, startup programs. Okay, so um, no review of the startup ecosystem, it's 
really complete by without mentioning the unicorns. As of 2019, last year, we have seven official unicorns in Hong Kong, and they are from a wide diverse of industries, such as logistics, travel tech, and uh, fintech, etc. So for a startup ecosystem that is just six years old, pretty nascent, and with a population just over 7.2 million, we are really quite um, serious in nurturing our startup, and it is also actually one of the highest per capita in the world. So you may have heard, you might have heard of uh, Klook or Kluk, uh, which provides a SaaS platform for travel activities, bookings, um, but they have also um, digitalized the ticket purchase and uh, boosted bookings for many international railway networks, such as Eurorail and Japan Rail. We have WeLab here, which is a fintech company. Uh, they provide a, a mobile learning experience by analyzing and structuring mobile data, um, and that would allow them to make credit decisions in just a matter of seconds. And they have successfully uh, entered into the Great Bay area. Google Van and Lala Move, they are logistics uh, on-demand platform, on-demand delivery platform that allows matching between driver's availability and uh, customer's demand instantly with a dynamic pricing um, schedule. Send Time here, uh, which is actually a spin-off project from Chinese University of Hong Kong and has become uh, the highest valued AI company in the world with its highly prized facial recognition and deep learning platform. Air Wallet here, uh, it is um, a, a cloud proprietary uh, platform which uh, provides a remittance international payment to global e-commerce. They have actually closed a series D round uh, just last week of uh, 116 uh, million US dollars. Bitmap. BitMEX here is a crypto um, uh, currency trading platform. I'd like to mention the fact that um, INT development is really high on the government's agenda, uh, which the Hong Kong government has set aside a budget of almost 13 US billion dollars for its development. Uh, this budget will be spent on enhancing our R&D activities, but also budget support via uh, universities, research institutes, cyberport, science park, and also the private sector, with an aim of encouraging more R&D activities in Hong Kong, to promote reindustrialization, to boost the productivity of industries across the board, but also to build a sustainable talent pipeline for us in Hong Kong. So these, um, um, slide shows you some of the examples of a whole raft of funding schemes available to startups and um, SMEs in Hong Kong. Uh, we have a um, funding initiative over here, um, which provides uh, funding, but also uh, tax incentives mm -hmm. uh, to encourage uh, companies and startups to invest more in R&D. Um, we have a um, set up a co-investment uh, venture fund with a group of private uh, VC uh, venture capitalists in Hong Kong in order to boost investment um, in startups. We subsidize um, first-time uh, patent application um, uh, for individuals but also companies. The technology voucher scheme here encourages um, company, uh, whether you are in a uh, tech space or non-tech space, to boost their productivity um, by, by uh, subsidizing them to buy um, or purchase uh, uh, technology solutions. For the talent development side, uh, the Hong Kong government has put in place uh, two um, uh, visa schemes that will facilitate uh, talent coming to Hong Kong uh, with a fast track uh, uh, granting of the visa schemes uh, so that the technology companies can uh, um, recruit uh, talent that, we, that is needed in Hong Kong uh, in a fast manner. We also subsidize, subsidize uh, companies to uh, recruit researchers and PhD holders uh, to, help our, to help their R&D development. And of course, we have other uh, marketing 
uh, development scheme, which are general funding scheme, which help uh, companies to uh, upgrade their brand and expand uh, their products and uh, their market into the uh, mainland and the ASEAN market. So um, you may ask, uh, how do you get um, access to all this funding? Um, usually, uh, you have to uh, incorporate a company in Hong Kong. And at the same time, uh, if you are a digital uh, tech company, uh, we really strongly encourage you to look at um, incubation programs by Cyberport. Whereas you're in a, a, a technology company with R&D focus, we encourage you to look at the, uh, the incubation program by uh, Hong Kong Science Park. Because um, by uh, entering into this structure programs, um, not only you receive um, uh, practical support in terms of funding, uh, mentorship from them, but they also provide a, a more streamlined service uh, to apply for these uh, government funding schemes. That said, you of course are uh, um, uh, welcome to look into other uh, uh, private incubators and accelerators, which they may have a different admission requirements and, and provide more industry and tech focus um, uh, uh, training and mentorship. So I'd like to wrap up my presentation here by give you a snippet of the Start Me Up HK Festival. Uh, this is um, a flagship event, startup event, organized by Invest Hong Kong. And uh, it's a, a whole week of extravaganza of startup conferences, job fair, hackathon, um, uh, investors meetings, uh, business matching opportunities between corporates and startups, you name it. Um, it is a week where really a lot of uh, investors, startups, corporates, uh, students, startups, they all gather together and learn. As of last year, in last year's festival, we have 17,000 attendees from over uh, 50 countries flocking to Hong Kong just to attend this uh, festival. So for this year's festival, because of the coronavirus, it has been postponed uh, from February to July, and we're moving uh, virtual this time for the first time. Uh, but despite that, uh, we are very confident that we will bring our global audience this time a very exciting uh, startup event. So we have a few um, con uh, core events confirmed. We have a smart city conference event uh, by KPMG, a retail tech event by Bailey Communications, Startup Impact Summit, which is uh, by the biggest startup community in Hong Kong, W Hub. Lifestyle Tech Conference by leading uh, startup media in Hong Kong, Jumpstart Media. And last but not least, the Ecosystem Summit by the Mills. So um, I'd like to play a short video which gives you a flavor of uh, what the Sami at HK Festival uh, is like for last year. Well, I think first and foremost, Hong Kong is such an international centre uh, for businesses of all shapes and sizes. Uh, for startups, it's a great place to access the fast growing markets of the region. There's also another trend in China that's very, very obvious digital. It's everywhere. Uh, last year I came as well, and this year, you know, good to see new technologies coming around every year. Yeah, it's a good event. The Hong Kong SL government is determined to transform Hong Kong into a leading global hub for innovation and entrepreneurship, where startups can use the city as a lab, a showcase, and of course, a global launch pad. We are seeing more people supporting the um, startup ecosystem, not only development investors, but also corporates and also the public as a whole. Um, so this is very important to boost up the ecosystem. I think the key message is, is that technology is here. Um, it's going to enable your business. So get ready for the speed of change. Um, also get ready to adopt um, the technology. The biggest highlight every single time is the collaboration that we see in this community and the willingness to share ideas even amongst competitors um, is what we think really makes this different to other markets in the world.
we're thrilled that Hong Kong is now on the global map of startup ecosystem. We hold by now the second highest density of unicorns per capita. We have so many world records and we're thrilled that this is only the beginning. Okay, so this is the end of my presentation. I'd like to pass the floor now to Jane Chan, who is the head of Stamia HK team. If you have questions, uh, please don't hesitate to uh, raise your questions in the chat area and we are happy to answer them. Thank you so much, Peggy. Thank you so much, Stefano. And really, it's a real pleasure. Even though I can't see you, I know that there's, um, there's quite a few people who have um, you know, signed in, listened to us. Thank you so much for your time. Um, here, we've got some time to actually address any kind of issues related to the startup ecosystem here. So if you've got any questions, please feel free to actually, you know, share them on the chat side. And Stefano is going to be our moderator for this session. And he's going to sort of like pick out the relevant kind of questions. Um, I'm happy to, to address those. Because I, I don't think we've got a two-way system going for this time round, do we, Stefano? Uh, well, uh, um, first of all, let me say thank you. <laughs> it has been really very, very interesting, uh, your presentation. We, I think, we don't have a time limit, but I suppose uh, we have a few questions already. And um, we will, uh, I think it will take another 10 or 15 minutes for those of you who don't have... Uh, yeah. Um, but before I get into this, let me ask uh, um, two people that uh, I would like uh, to to say a few words. They are two people who have been uh, supporting us a lot in all our um, activities in Italy in promoting uh, and assisting Italian companies to uh, develop their business in Hong Kong. One of them is Gianluca Mirante, whom I see already in the screen. Gianluca uh, is not only a friend, but is, uh, is an important guy here in the Hong Kong uh, business environment scene because uh, he is the director of the Hong Kong Trade Development Council, is our housing organization, uh, uh, very similar to the ICE, Italian Italian Trade Commission. Uh, Gianluca, would you like to say a few words, please? Thank you, you can do it. Yes, now. thank you, Stefano and uh, Peggy and uh, Jane. Um, my message is very short. I totally agree with what uh, I heard and saw in your presentation. Uh, I think uh, in spite of our difficulties here, uh, our confinement at home, uh, my message is very simple. We are here, we are working. Uh, to recover and to um, focus on uh, Italian companies and their uh, importance of being in Hong Kong uh, in this difficult period. There, is, there are no other um, um, places in the world with such an important and amazing um, uh, place where to develop their, their um, ideas and their strategies. So we, we join effort with Invest Hong Kong for, for in many, many uh, ways, not only related to technology. And so, um, of course, probably now, more than before, Stefano, I, I can say that uh, uh, the, the so-called omni-channel uh, strategy must be implemented. Uh, so even those small uh, uh, offline uh, retails and uh, um, activities must develop something on, on, online. And technology is the key, no? The, 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 uh, it's important to, uh, to have a strategy also online. And Hong Kong represents an important uh, and valid um, and strategic partner for developing this, uh, this strategy and also to uh, in to access the uh, Asian market through Hong Kong. So Greater Bay Area concept is particularly important. I heard uh, Stefano, your, your comments, this is, uh, absolutely agree for, for this, this kind of um, approach. And uh, of course, for the time being, we, we hope that uh, the situation will get back to normal very soon. We also have an office <laughs> in, in Milan city center. So maybe we can follow up with some face-to-face uh, uh, -face meetings in the traditional ways, uh, way. I think this is still uh, uh, important in our market in Italy. Uh, and of course, we are planning some important activity together with, of course, the uh, Hong Kong government, Invest Hong Kong, 
and also other uh, strategic partners from Hong Kong in Italy next year. Uh, the event will be called Think Asia, Think Hong Kong, but we will have more time to talk about this in the, the, in the coming months. Uh, yeah. Thanks a lot for, for, uh, for our invitation, for your invitation. I'm, I mean, uh, TDC in Milan is totally uh, fine to, to support any of these ideas and to help Italian companies through the partnership with Invest Hong Kong to go to Hong Kong. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Gianluca, for uh, anybody who wish to get in touch with Gianluca and his team. You will find the uh, website link in the invitation that you have uh, in the program of this today's uh, webinar. The other person I would like to invite uh, is a well-known figure in the startup uh, uh, ecosystem in Italy. He's a journalist and a great expert. His name is Emil Abirashid, he's a journalist and advisor and director of the of uh, startup business. Well, um, it's uh, my role in the Italian ecosystem. I'm both a journalist and advisor. So uh, other than editing startup business, that is uh, the online magazine where I'm, I am editor in chief, I help companies to grow up. And one of the things I do are the Italian Innovation Days around the world where they bring Italian startups and scale-ups uh, to discover and meet to discover uh, foreign markets and meet with potential uh, financial and industrial partner, uh, partners there. Uh, we've been in Australia, we've been in Japan, we've been in Singapore. I look forward also to go to Hong Kong because I'm uh, I'm uh, strongly convinced of Kong. It's it's uh, a great opportunity and. Um, uh, I was ready to go to um, the event uh, uh, last February, but uh, the trip was uh, actually postponed due, due to the uh, emergency. But uh, uh, what I'm learning, uh, working with companies and bringing com Italian companies around the world is uh, it's very important to catch the opportunities, uh, mostly in uh, those areas of the world. And uh, uh, I'm, uh, uh, my suggestion is to take any uh, possible advantage and explore uh, all the opportunities. Uh, of course, so starting from Hong Kong, that uh, as uh, uh, Stefano Peggy and Jane said, it's a great, great opportunity. And um, so uh, I think uh, uh, it's very important to follow all uh, those uh, webinars and uh, uh, informative uh, uh, meetings uh, uh, that are organized during those weeks and take the opportunity to go to Hong Kong uh, as soon as is possible, as I hope to do so. Thank you very much. And one thing I want to add, Stefano, one of the other differences between uh, mainland China and Hong Kong uh, is that to, to travel to Hong Kong, you don't need a visa. <laughs> yes, that's a, that's a very good point. Thank you, Emil. Thank you very much for your, your statements. Uh, all is very appreciated. And yes, of course, there are many more differences. Uh, China is, I don't need to remind you, is the biggest market, the largest market. It's a great opportunity for all of us. And thank God there are quite a number of very pleasant of, uh, differences between Hong Kong and China. And Hong Kong is China. That is the beauty of it. Um, I've seen uh, a few questions. Maybe Jane, can you look at it? Or Peggy, can you look at the chat? Perhaps you could uh, choose any of them that make it, makes it easier and quicker for you to uh, reply to some of them. I've noticed one about the minimum capital. I've seen another one very interesting on about, about the funding yep. of startups. Uh, perhaps uh, you could put together those two. Uh, yeah, let me just go. Yeah, happy to to address these. Um, I apologise if I can't take them all of them, but I'll definitely ones that, that we come across that we can see. We we'll certainly be be happy to address some of these. Now, there's someone from Angelo Minotti, and he's asking, "Dear Stefano, is there room for space startup?" Um, I'm not quite sure what you mean by space, but if you're talking about you know, actually going into space. So we're talking about aerospace kind of startups. Um, we have the, the Hong Kong Science and Technology Park um, is very R&D focused. I don't think they've got anyone on board with aerospace kind of um, 
information or expertise, but they can certainly um, connect you to the relevant people within China. So the aerospace area is very big and very well developed in China. And, you know, we would be happy if you want to send us a, an email talking a little bit more about what your startup is, we'll see if we can connect you to the right kind of experts. Um, what is the minimum requirement? So this is to, I think, is, is, is it? I can't actually see the name, but that someone's asking, what is the minimum investment required to set up a limited company in Hong Kong? Um, so Hong Kong is very, very business friendly. You can basically set up a limited company, I think Peggy already mentioned, with one Hong Kong dollar. So when you think about there's 10 Hong Kong dollars to a euro, roughly, um, you're talking about a very small minimum amount that's required to actually open up a limited company. Obviously, you know, just because the minimum requirements are low doesn't mean to say that we would like, you know, people to open companies um, that are more shell. We would love to see people here setting up a company, um, getting, taking advantage of the different business opportunities, especially in the startup side and, you know, expanding the business and ultimately hiring and contributing to the Hong Kong economy. So, you know, the, the actual process itself is, is fairly straightforward for the, the whole process of, of opening up and setting up a business. Um, from Federico de is it Vincenzo? Um, what about money grants or funds to startups? So, and Peggy is going to make the, the presentation available. Actually, Stefano is going to make the presentation available to you, where she did highlight some of the funding schemes that are um, available. So. Hong Kong government has been incredibly generous in terms of prioritizing the sector. There is a whole rush of different kind of funding programs for, for example, on R&D, if you're trying to, to do a substantial amount of R&D work, or you're looking to hire PhDs or other kind of very, um, very experienced scientists to actually help you with support. And, um, you know, for example, one of the funding schemes that Peggy mentioned is the Enterprise Support Scheme. That is a matching grant that the government will provide you of up to 1.3 million US dollars. Um, and that's based on, the, that's based on, on payments and tranches, you have to apply for this and um, it will be peer reviewed by a committee who will look at the merits of your application. They will also interview you and see what your ideas are and whether it's something that obviously is going to make a, hopefully make a difference within the, you know, the, the R&D space um, globally and specifically Hong Kong. And then based on that, they will say yes or no to, to your funding application. But uh, if you look at the, the, the different types of funding schemes, I think we have been, and we're seen to be as one of the most generous in terms of funding schemes globally for startups. And there's a lot of support um, around to actually help you apply for them as well. Um, for more information though about, you know, the details about the various types of government support, the funding schemes that are available, please go to our website, uh, you know, www.starmeup.hk and under the resources, we've tried to compile all the government funding schemes that are available into one single area so people can access that easily. So do check that out. Um, there's someone asking about um, supporting a healthcare mid to late stage startup and ophthalmology space. Um, we do have a, a priority on health tech in general, and the best company to actually support you on that is the Hong Kong Science and Technology Park. And as I mentioned, if you do reach out to us, we'll link you up to the right people, and you can start an early discussion with Science Park. I know that Stefano is actually going to be, um, you know, asking uh, Science Park to actually do one of the talks as part of the series and you can get a lot more information but the science part would be a great facilitator for you if you are and you know if you're interested in the natural being accelerated and they do that even for mid-stage companies um, you can consider the programs there 
or you can become just a tenant at this Hong Kong Science and Technology Park, and then you would get access to all the facilities, including their access to the funding schemes, as well as their go-to-market kind of support as well. Um, let me see. Public, um, from Federico Papa, um, he's asking us if I can tell him more about the Hong Kong public investment programs. Are they equity free? Yes, for the majority of them. There is one exception, which is the, the ITVF, which is this, um, the VC matching fund that Peggy also mentioned in her presentation. And what that is, is that we've selected um, in, in the first instance about five or six VCs based in Hong Kong um, as a trial kind of basis and we basically co-invest with the VCs on terms of one dollar on the government side and two dollars on the VC side. So for example if you've got a startup and you approach those VCs and they agree to invest in you and you're also based in Hong Kong they can then pass your information to um, the Innovation Technology Bureau, who's responsible for this. They will look at the investment and they will co-invest on exactly the same terms as the as a VC. So what that means is that um, you know we, we're basically helping the to de-risk some of the VC's investment, but also we're hoping to really encourage them to invest more into the, the Hong Kong-based startups as well. Uh, let's see, seed funding. So Lorenzo, Lorenzo Stefano is asking um, whether there is any program for finding seed investors in Hong Kong. He says, my startup is developing a system to classify face people. Um, so in terms of seed funding, for those kind of um, programs, it really is incubation that you need to look at. So, so the, again, the Science Park, Cyberport are the two publicly funded institutions that really have the biggest range of um, incubation programs. And in addition to the mentor size support and you know network access, they will also give you a level of financial investment as well. It's not very much. Um, I'll tell you that now. It's, it's something like I think 200,000 um, Hong Kong dollars. I think at, Cy at Cyberport that translates to about 20,000 euros as seed funding. So you know it's not a massive amount of funding. But I think what's great about those programs is that once you're on there, they have um, you know very large networks of um, investors associated with them. So you would be able to get access to that as well. And in terms of trying to access other types of seed funding in Hong Kong, it's really done in, in more of like, a, you know, trying to connect with the, the investors here, but maybe trying to leverage more the, the event side of things to try and meet relevant um, investors. But there's not like a, a program as such for, for seed investment here. Uh, one Hong Kong dollars to make a greenfield investment, I suppose. Um, um, greenfield, as in a shell company, we try to encourage people not to just leverage Hong Kong's business advantages purely as a shell company. I think there are fantastic opportunities to set something up in Hong Kong and leverage that as a gateway to not just China, but really to other areas within um, Asia as well. Hong Kong recently signed a... A free trade, well, it's not a, a, a trade agreement with ASEAN, so the Association of Southeast Asian Nations. And basically, what that means is that it's given us a, a whole bunch of preferential access to different um, cities and countries and um, kind of benefits and protection as well. So it's, it's really look, worth looking at Hong Kong as a place to potentially really try and scale up and raise your profile within the Asia region. Uh, I think, Jane, uh, I think we have answered most of the questions. There was one from uh, my friend Antonino who was saying one dollar, one dollar is for, 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 for green investment, greenfield investment. Uh, one dollar is the legal requirement for uh, limited companies' uh, capital. Of course, so that means that, you know, it's, it's meant to make things easy, let's say. In Italy, you know, you need uh, a capital requirement, minimum capital requirement of uh, 
2,000 uh, euros, and you have to pay one third to the bank and wait for the for the for, for all the process to go through. In China, you have to deposit usually one million renminbi, or or you have to present a business plan justifying the cost and investment, and then you have to wait for the for the authorization to proceed. If the capital authorities believe that the capital is not enough, you have to put in more capital, and then they all the payments of the capital has to be, go through specific channels. Whoever has familiarity with China know about the, all this bureaucracy that can extend the time to set up a company to up to three, four months easily in China. In Hong Kong, nothing of that. One Hong Kong dollar is symbolic, of course. That means there is no actual need to pay this one, con, one Hong Kong dollar to a bank account. No need for that. It's just a formality for the accountants for the uh, secretary of services uh, that will help you set up the company to declare in a piece of paper the capital paid up is one or one dollar or ten thousand or one million whatever is required so this is the answer to that and um, i think we reply to most of the questions uh, uh, i think we covered them all jane what do you think is there any I, other? Think, I, I think i've just come across one that i didn't see earlier which was um can we help to show the presentation to investors um and we actually, we have uh, the Samuel Hong Kong Festival, which is happening in July. I just like to spend a minute talking about that because it really is a fantastic opportunity. So the physical event last year, we had about 17,000. Actually, it was probably closer to about, closer to about 20,000 when we took into all the other side events that went on. It was just the main events we counted. So incredibly popular. But I think what's more interesting is that the majority of the people do come from around Asia and a lot of them leverage the Stamp of Hong Kong Festival as a means to actually find out what's happening in other markets without having to travel too far. So with the, the various events that we've, gone, what we've got going on, so for example, in the smart city side, um, they are definitely opening to to startups and i think um, they've got these these booths um that, that's available as well if you want to raise your profile of your smart city um, startup to a wider audience there's also like w hub they've got two days of events going on and there's everything there there's master classes there are you know startup booths there's also direct um one-to-one -one business matching with investors as well as other partners there's a hackathon there are people come you know top-notch speakers um, coming from around the world as well to be speaking at that. So I do suggest um, you try to find out more about the various events. Again, we haven't yet updated some of this information on our website because literally we just announced yesterday we're going virtual. Um, but we will be, if you connect to Stefano or connect to us, we will be happy to connect you to the organizers and you can see how you can get your company um, in front of a much bigger audience as well. So whilst we don't actually, you know, provide a direct kind of opportunity, we organize the events, a platform to enable you to actually do this. Um, and finally, um, I think I've, I've, I'm hoping that I've covered all the questions. You can always reach out to Stefano to, to either one of us, and I'm sure the contacts will be made available. But I just want to say that, um, you know, just the, the tough time you folks have had in Italy, our heart is here with you. We understand what you're going through. Uh, I would like, uh, if there's nothing else, I would like to close it now. I strongly recommend all of you to please participate at our next uh, future webinars. The next one I will remind you is the one in cooperation with the Hong Kong Science Technology Park, one of the major players in the Hong Kong startup and technology uh, scene. Uh, and I also remind you that five projects um, will be selected and presented uh, and you'll have a chance to present your projects to the Hong Kong Science Technology Park incubation team uh, and they will give will get back to you right away to discuss your project and to let you know whether the, your project is is feasible as a good chance of being admitted and so on. All the way myself, my staff, my team, Peggy and Jane in Hong Kong and all our colleagues I must remind you that Peggy and Jane are specifically dedicated to the startup business. 
But then we have uh, 10 teams in Hong Kong, all dedicated to specific sectors. So uh, not only Peggy and Jane, but also all our colleagues will be ready to, uh, to follow, to assist you, to listen to your projects. And uh, please feel free to contact us, to get in touch with us at any time. I should repeat it, our services are free. And uh, Jane, would you like to say a few words to close it? Um, just to thank you to, to you um, and to Laria and, and your other speakers um, for, and of course all of you in the audience um, for listening to us. And thank you very much Federico about my Scottish accent. <laughs> <It's> much appreciated. <laughs> thank you very much. Great, thank you very much. Grazie a tutti e alla prossima, al prossimo evento. Grazie mille, arrivederci a tutti.